Nation, it is Monday. I am Philip DeFranco, and I'm gonna ramble about some things that matter to me today on Monday, because I'm awesome like that. Yeah, news. And the first thing I wanna talk about today is a super fun word, and that is socialism. <gasps> if you say that in front of Americans, they will get very scared because it ends in an ism, just like communism, you damn red. But today we see another example of maybe socialism not being the worst thing in the world as long as it does not encompass everything about your life. Because according to some fun numbers today from the CIA Factbook, America is 51st in life expectancy in the world. And that is despite the United States of America putting more money into healthcare than any other industrialized nation. 51st. The average American will live 78.49 years. If you're Canadian, good news for you, eh? With 81.48 years, but no one can even touch the best country on the list, and that is Monaco. With the average life expectancy of 89.68 years with their damn dirty socialized medicine, that is five years greater than even the closest country to them. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the shortest life expectancy is Chad, which is found in Africa with 49.68 years for your life expectancy. Now it should be noted, Monaco, while it does have socialized medicine, is also considered a tax haven for the wealthy. There's only like 35,000 people, but 51st for America? That is insanity. But it will be very interesting to see how that number changes over the next decade, since many Americans now have health insurance that previously did not. And that could be a huge reason why America trails 50 other countries in life expectancy. There are many Americans in this country that did not have health insurance, could not get good health health insurance. It should be noted, it's likely not going to just skyrocket. Like, look at the UK. They have an average life expectancy of 80.4 years. Congratulations. But it's not just because they have socialized medicine. I mean, sure, it's great to get preventative care and you might have to wait a little longer, but I mean, they, they also don't put like preservatives, like the preservatives we put in our food, they don't do that. That's gonna be a massive thing. Foods with high caloric, but also low monetary value. Looking at you, McDonald's. So just something I found interesting since I turned 27 over the weekend and now I'm thinking about how I'm going to die. I would prefer it to be like in a Bruce Willis scenario where I save the world from an asteroid as I close my eyes and I envision my entire life. Also, if I spoil that movie for you, it was in the 90s. I get to say that. But it'll probably just happen in a car accident. I think that's the way I'm gonna go out. Anyway, that's dark. Let's move on to the next story of the day. Next up, let's talk about something people are calling the death of print media. I don't really see it, but the death of print media. It looks good in a headline. This is coming off of two sets of news, and that was, one, a story broke that the New York Times is offering 30 of their non-union employees buyouts. If not enough people take buyouts, they're gonna have to lay people off and all oh, the death of print media. Ah, but no, I don't see that really. Here's an internal memo that was given to Times staffers. Dear colleagues, as we all know, these are financially challenging times. While our digital subscription plan has been successful, the advertising climate remains volatile and we don't see this changing in the near future. Then it goes into detail about the buyouts, but like they said, they're actually making money from their subscription service. While we continue to invest where needed to ensure our role as a global leader in news and information, we must make some difficult decisions to lower our costs. So they are making money from their digital subscription end, but they are still losing losing money, but how? I would answer that question with the question, have you ever seen a Sunday New York Times paper? What? No. If I had to estimate, there are more people in the world who have been beaten to death with a Sunday New York Times newspaper than people that have finished the entire Sunday New York Times newspaper. The thing weighs like five pounds and costs six dollars. And before you start going, well, you have to go all digital. It's the future. Today, News Corp announced they are shutting down The Daily. If you don't know what that is, they started a tablet-only magazine that you had to pay for, and oh, that's probably why. That rodeo is gonna end December 15th, 2012, and it, it's expected. It was rumored that they were losing $30 million a year trying to make this work. But is the New York Times going out of business? I mean, usually layoffs are a precursor to bankruptcy. They're gonna have to shut down. It's over! I mean, the Daily, out of their 170-person staff, fired 50 people in July, so, you know, the New York Times is a completely different beast. In 2008, they fired 100 people. In 2011, 20. In 2012, hey, who knows? The analogy here is times have changed. Yeah, back in the day, it was cool to look like Schwarzenegger, your muscles, having muscles, just things that didn't make sense. Just giant people. But nowadays it makes more sense to have a swimmer's body, to be lean, toned, run your business like that. And I think that's what you're seeing with the New York Times. They're realizing that, you know, if we stick with the newspaper mind, we're going out of business. So we have to go digital. I think that is the future. But that's just my opinion. Next up, there was a little gamery sexy time news, and that involves Anna Moleva, otherwise known on the internet as Ormeli. She is a Russian cosplayer, and she is amazing. When I saw her picture this morning, I was blown away. If you've seen anything for Bioshock Infinite, she looks just like her. This is her cosplay for it, and it is amazing. Like, there, I have not seen something that fits so well since probably like Jessica Negri and Lollipop Chainsaw, but this is amazing. And I was definitely not the only one because a 
professional games who make Bioshock were like, yeah, she's hired. It's also expected that she'll be on the back of the game's box, and yes. I may not have known about Anna yesterday, but I am a huge fan now, and because I am me, that's probably the best way to explain it, I found all her other cosplay, and it is really good. So if you'd like to check out a gallery of the awesomeness that is Anna Moleva, I'll link to that down below. Then in YouTube news, sometime tonight, probably around 7 p.m., YouTube will be undergoing maintenance, so you won't be able to like, comment, things and stuff and words. That's not really a story. I am going to make an educated guess that this maintenance is either one, a 100% new YouTube layout change, or the beginning of it. I think it's coming out in the next two weeks, I'm guessing. As of right now, about 2% of people on YouTube have the new layout, and it's definitely something to get used to. I always try and reserve judgment for two weeks because I hate everything at the beginning, and then I'm like, okay, no, that's, okay, that one's kind of cool. On my second channel, I'm gonna walk you through like where things are, how you change it, things and stuff, so if you wanna be educated on it, click on a link down below, but yay, uh, change. And next up, I wanna give an update to the super warm, fuzzy feeling inside story that happened last week, and that was, you know, the New York cop saw a homeless man without shoes, he went to a Skechers, got the guy some shoes, someone took a picture of it happening, and everyone felt good about the world for three seconds. Well, someone from the New York Times found him, there was an interview, and it was very interesting to hear his story. The homeless man who had no shoes goes by the name Jeffrey Hillman. Hillman was an army guy, joining in 1978, serving as a food service specialist in America and Germany. He had his veteran's ID on him, and it turned out after five years, he was honorably discharged. He worked in some kitchens before he became homeless. He has two children that he doesn't really have contact with, and when asked how he ended up on the streets, he answered blankly, I don't know. Also, thing to note is during the interview, the reporter noticed he didn't have his shoes on, and when questioned about it, he said, quote, the shoes are hidden. They're worth a lot of money. I could lose my life. And if there was ever a person that would be allowed to say, this is why we can't have nice things, it would be Jeff. I mean, because if you think about it, Jeffrey is homeless. He's around homeless people all day, and he has $100 on his feet. He's gonna get stabbed. But he also said something else that I found very interesting. I was put on YouTube. I was put on everything without permission. What do I get? This went around the world, and I want a piece of the pie. And it was interesting. I mean, emotionally, I reacted like, oh, he just wants something. But I mean, yeah. Everyone looked at this picture. Everyone felt good about the world for three seconds. Everyone used it as a talking point. I'm talking about you, Mr. Bloomberg. But then the world moved on, walked past, as it does. Whereas the real help, the shoes are temporary. However, Jeffrey, almost unusable. How do you help him? Or should you? That's too socialist. People in life fail. They should have to deal with it. And I bring it up because now this update to the story makes me feel all the feels. And it makes me wonder, how can we help those that are legitimately in need, that have tried, that can, when all of those same things help the lazy and the worthless to society? Because it's easy to say everyone should put in their fair share when you're not putting in anything. And remember to possibly win a $100 Amazon gift card. Leave a comment down below. Join the conversation. Maybe hit the like button, favorite if you really like it. But of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.